نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين العارفين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله عز وجل في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد تعاونوا على البر والتقوى وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال الله عز وجل في شان حبيبه مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وسل عليه My dear brothers, sisters, elders, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today, you have participated in the 25 years of the demise of Tere Tariqat, Rehber Shariat, Hazrat Alama Peer Muhammad Abdul Wahab Siddiqui, Rahmatullah Alayh. He passed away 25 years ago in March 1994. And that day is still as fresh in my mind today as it was on the day itself. It's a very emotional day for not just the family but the wider spiritual family. And Hazrat Sahib he was only 52 years of age. In fact, he was only 51, had not even reached 52 years of age. Such is the decisions of the Almighty that he takes away those that he loves the most more quickly. We still cannot understand the wisdom for his early departure, but Allah knows the wisdom behind that departure. 25 years ago, when we took on the responsibility of Tariqa, the spiritual path, there were certain choices in front of me which were based around, do we continue to do what is tradition? Or do we break from the tradition and go back to the original tradition of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? So certain things we did which broke with tradition, not immediately, but over a period of time. 
And what you have witnessed today and yesterday and the day before is evidence of this fact that our break from tradition has not allowed us to regress but has allowed us to progress in better understanding Islam. Today, we have talked about climate change, a change in our global natural systems. But you know, in an urs, typical urs, every single alim will stand up and say, Hazrat Sahib was Wali Allah. He was a great man. MashaAllah, Wali Allah. His children are doing good. Everybody's good, doing good. You, you've all gathered here. MashaAllah, SubhanAllah, JazakAllah. Where's the food? Alhamdulillah. And the end. The Bazurg will be pleased that people have gathered to remember his name but they have not remembered his character. So, discussing climate change, is that different to remembering Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah No, not at all. Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah his character was such that he was the most moderate, the most balanced, and the least wasteful individual I have ever seen in my life. Now, it's easy to say these things. You know, when we have feasts, when we have gatherings, there's a lot of food wasted. A lot of things that are wasted. But I was 27 years old when Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah passed away, my father. And in 27 years, I did not see a single plate from his table which he ate from where he left food to waste. A single item of food ever. Now, we can all be reckless in our lives sometimes. We can all be indulgent in our lives sometimes. But Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah He was so particular. And my mother, Rahmatullah Aleha, she was even more particular. Because she was half Mimin and half Sheikh. So by family traits, they ensured that food would never go to waste. Do you know, this is a family gathering. And it's important for me to share these experiences with you. My mother, Rahmatullah Aleha, whose Qabr Sharif is next to my father, I saw her with my own eyes eating food which is four days old. And you know, typically spoiled brats. We never used to eat the food the next day. If food is made one day, we would never eat it the next day. Oh, this is old food. Uh, and there were some brothers that were more spoiled than others. I won't tell you who was the most spoiled one. Right. Men in black are always spoiled. <laughs> Look, I didn't say anything, did I? I don't know why you're laughing. But there were some occasions when I saw my mother eating food four days old. And I used to say, Maji, are we poor people? Are you a poor woman 
that you are eating food four days old. You know what she used to say to me? She used to respond to me. She used to say, the taste I have from this old food, I cannot find the same taste in newly cooked food. I thought it was bizarre. Completely illogical. Freshly cooked food has a very savory taste. Why is she telling me that food that's four days old is more tastier? Do you know what she used to tell me? This food is rejected. By the family, this food is rejected. This food is doing dua. Oh Allah, find me someone to eat me. And because I am the fulfillment of the dua of this food, I find that this food is more tasteful. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. Now, that's the exercise of a woman who I saw with my own eyes. Totally wasteless home. No waste of food. Absolutely zero. And because of that, for a long time when I lived in Hijaz, I tried to follow the sunnah of my mother. In one year, I estimated that the amount of food that I wasted from my fridge in one year was less than five pounds worth. I'm telling you these things because we are in an urs remembering Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah and his family. So that should be a point of reference. My mother's home, there was zero wastage of food. In my home, when I used to live in Hijaz by myself, in one year, I estimated wasting about five pounds worth of food. Since obviously I've had three beautiful children, the wastage level has gone up, but only slightly. I can't estimate the same uh, because it's difficult to estimate because I too have some slightly spoiled children. However, we are still inspired by the actions of Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah and my Saba Rahmatullah. But what does that mean for you? It means that today, when you are learning about conservationism, conserving our energy, conserving our food, conserving our resources, when you, the professional leading Muslim community, take that message to the wider Muslim community, even if one drop of rice, one peck of rice is saved from waste, the sawab of that will go to Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah. That is Urs. Urs is not about empty talk. Urs is about creating an opportunity <coughs> to generate sawab for the sahib urs ye asal sawab teaching people how to create sawab sawab is given by allah but if you have been inspired by the urs the reward, the spiritual reward of that will go to Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah Alayhi. Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah Alayhi, 
in his in the 27 years that I knew him. Uh, Molina was saying earlier on that the most wasteful thing that we do is time. Wasting our time. Wasting other people's time. We think, well, time is not a commodity. What is time? Nothing. One thing about Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah and I say that it was one of his miracles as a murshid, as a sheikh and as an alim, he was always on time. That's one of his miracles. I'm trying to perfect it as well. And some of my brothers are trying even harder. MashaAllah. But the perfection of coming to time and not wasting your time and not wasting anybody else's time is also part of the conservation of the resources of society. Now today, you've heard a lot about conservationism. How we should do certain things, shorter showers, not wasting food, looking at what we buy, looking at need, not greed. For example, we buy 10 shirts. We can only wear one. You can't wear 10 shirts, although I did know somebody who wore 10 shirts. But you can only wear one. And how many times do you really wear that piece of shirt before you destroy it? You've heard a lot about conservationism. However, our Islam teaches us conservationism with a difference. Conservationism is excellent. For example, you have one glass and in drinking one glass you wasted five other glasses. Very bad. Allah said, don't do it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, don't do it. Very bad. But do you really think Allah is going to be weakened if we waste water? Allah is the creator of water. He's created millions of gallons of water in the clouds. And if you take all the clouds in the world, billions of gallons of water are amassed in the clouds by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's system. And all of that water falls on the earth. <coughs> and Allah says, through the falling of that water, I create life. And then that water that falls goes through a natural filtration process and we get drinking water. Do you think it is difficult for Allah to multiply that available drinking water five times, ten times, fifty times? No. It's not difficult for Allah. So when you are conserving, don't think that you are doing it for God. Because Allah can replicate it. In fact, He can fold up the whole world, the whole universe, the whole trans-universal system, and then He can re-explode it to recreate it. And Allah says, and that in the Quran, and that would not be difficult for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he's telling you, conserve. Conserve. Do not waste. In the Quran, Allah says, Wa innahu la yuhibbul musrifi. The 
let's all say subhanallah unlimited glory be to allah allah says i do not like those people who waste who are wasters and he says this to teach us not because he cannot recreate the water not because he cannot recreate the energy not because he's limited in recreating the resources no don't be misled conservationism in islam is not for allah's sake allah says conservationism in islam is for your sake it's for your benefit why instead of wasting 5 cups of water you only use 1 cup of water and avoid wasting 4 cups of water then what should you do oh can i have some brownie points please can i have some stars because oh mashallah i was so good i did not waste this water so we are looking for brownie points we are looking for shabash no wrong you avoid wasting four glasses of water or anything that is wasteful you do that and you conserve and you take that one glass of water you drink it and then you say after you have not been wasteful then what do you do you say rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta as-sami Oh Allah I have avoided being wasteful so that you can accept my humble effort to not waste what you have created for my benefit And Allah I ask you innaka you are samiyun alim you are all hearing and omniscient of all of my actions so let me say this to you if you avoided wasting so that you could show off oh i avoided this because so that i can tell my neighbors i can tell my friends i can put it on the social media snapchat oh i stopped this wrong wasteful act of omission do it and then be humble before allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say allah i have done this act i've omitted to be wasteful but now allah i'm asking you be pleased with me i when you act in this way of humility and humbleness without any pride and without any arrogance then allah almighty says oh my servant i am now pleased with you you know i have tried to compare this dunya with paradise you know what is paradise jannah who would like to go to paradise you're all lying aren't you come on put your hand up if you would like to go to paradise oh we all astaghfirullah i think you're all very hungry huh 
We would all like to go to paradise. However, you've heard today about conservationism. Eat and drink and do not waste. But in paradise, you can eat as much as you want, you can drink as much as you want, and there will be no waste whatsoever. Did you know that as we eat today, it goes in one end and it comes out as excrement, as urine? Because that's the way of the dunya. There is waste. Consumption <coughs> of anything has a natural order in this dunya, which is that there is a waste. You put something in a factory, there is a waste. You put something in your mouth, there is a waste. You light a bulb, there is a waste. However, paradise is without any waste whatsoever. There is no excrement. There is no urination. There is nothing that comes out. You eat and you drink and it's all consumed and it's all immersed in your body. State of perfection. But Allah Almighty says, before you get to paradise, do not waste in this world because if you avoid wasting in this world, your dunya will become paradise. <coughs> and that's why I have to tell you that the years I lived with Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah they were like paradise for me. All the troubles in the world, I would be consumed with them. When I would go and see Hazrat Sahib, I would forget all my troubles. Everything. It's like he has extracted all the anxiety and I'm in a state of mesmerization. Alhamdulillah, Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah 25 years ago passed away. He left a legacy. And that legacy was two things. Deen and dunya. Religion and the world. He did not advocate for religiosity. This is 35 years ago, before he passed away. He did not advocate for religiosity, which is absent from dunya. Hence he said, go and seek scientific knowledge, humanities knowledge, knowledge of the arts, knowledge of all sorts of humanities. Learn all of that. But also master the Islamic theological sciences as well. Deen and dunya. Balance. Today we have extremism because there's a lot of deed which is narrow and no perspective in dunya, no context of dunya. And those dunya leaders who only understand the dunya, they do not understand the deen. 25 years after Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah passed away, his teachings today. I believe, are more relevant than they were even 35 years ago. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. Hazrat Sahib Rahmatullah led a life of great humility. And I invite you, brothers and sisters, capitalism, consumerism, or rather I should say, unbridled capitalism, unfettered and unchecked consumerism has become a disease of our time. And no one knows how to break the circle. Why? 
The more you eat, the more you wear, the more jobs there will be, the more money there will be, the more money you can spend. That's a cycle of modern capitalistic society. It's an unbreakable chain. And Islam does not say that we must break the chain of capitalism. What Islam teaches us is to restrain that chain so that it doesn't move as fast as it is. It moves at a much more slower and appetizable and much more rational and reasonable pace of capitalism, human consumption, which is in line with our energy, our resources, and our capacity. We in this country, we came as migrants, poor people looking for jobs, working in factories, not you, your parents, your grandparents. And there was nothing that you were going to teach Western society. Because you were looking for jobs. However, now with the second and third generation establishing themselves as British citizens, as British Muslim citizens, I believe that we have an opportunity to share our values with the wider British society of how in our homes we conserve energy and do not waste so that we can then amplify that into the wider society. We amplify that message into the wider society. I hope and I pray that inshallah you, the mothers, I'm not saying this because you do all the cooking. I'm not saying that to you because, mashallah, I have noticed that brothers do a lot of cooking these days as well. And I definitely can cook an omelette. So <coughs> that's the extent of my cooking. But I'm saying to you as sisters, because you are the cradle of life. Life begins in your hands. Teach your children. You know, sometimes we get overly clinical. No germs. Oh, we've got to clean this, we've got to clean that. Hazrat Sahib Ramatullah, he told me a very nice story. He was standing at the top of his house and there was an open sewer that was passing about half a mile away, but because our house was so tall, four or five stories, he could see that open sewer. And he saw that this 10-year-old Patan girl was walking along the sewer in rags, had no food, no clothes, but she was walking along and suddenly she dived into the open sewer, took half an apple, and started eating it. Hazrat Sahib Ramatullah said, Oh Allah, if I would have eaten that apple, I would have been sick for at least six months. But this girl, she's so resilient. Alhamdulillah, she ate the apple, and her cheeks were so red, it's like she had applied natural makeup on herself. She was so resilient. You, my sisters, you are the cradle of life. Do not spoil your children by allowing them to waste their food. Take the food, give it to them the second time and the third time. Love is not that you teach them something which is against the teachings of Allah and of Rasulullah And you, my brothers, you are responsible for your families. You should also look to
to live within your means. One of the biggest diseases we have today. We talk about conservationism. But you earn 2,000 pounds a month. You spend 3,000 pounds a month. You live on credit. Why? Because somebody else has got this, so I need that as well. You live in the disease of desire and living without, beyond your means. I say to you, brothers, because ultimately, not that the women can't work. The women can, alhamdulillah, work, but their money is their money. The brothers in Islam, your responsibility is to provide food and shelter and resources for your family. Learn to live within your means. There is no shame in that. If you do not live within your means, you are acting against Allah's teaching and Rasulullah's teaching. And if you do that and start to live in a more amiable way within your means, less waste in your homes, I think the sawab of all of that will be given to Hazrat Sahib Abdullah. And he will be pleased that 25 years after my demise, people are still learning and doing those things which will transmit spiritual reward to me. May Allah Almighty bless your gathering here today. Bless your arrival here today. And inshallah, if Allah gives us life, we don't know how long we're going to live. But if Allah gives us life, we will continue to serve you. This is the responsibility of this blessed seat of Hijaz. We will continue to serve you, to help you to understand how you can please Allah and how you can please Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, in the final instance, before we finish, we will end with a short zikr, and then, inshallah, we will do dua and we will end with food, inshallah. So, for a few moments, we will do zikr. Please close your eyes, focus on your hearts, and let's do zikr together. <laughs>